Durbin Watson test. Now this test will test for whether there is a first order serial correlation present in your data or not. So supposedly if you have this model with you, yt equals to beta 1 plus beta 2 xt 2 and so on to beta k xt k plus ut. And ut follows rho of ut minus 1 plus et. That is your first order autocorrelation. So you'll estimate this first equation by OLS and you'll compute u hat t equals to, how will you compute u hat t? yt minus y hat t. y hat t is beta 1 hat minus beta 2 hat xt2 and so on to beta k hat xt k. Clear? What you will do then is that you will compute the Durbin-Watson test statistic. What is that Durbin-Watson test statistic? D is equal to T starting from 2 till n u hat t minus u hat t minus 1 square divided by summation t starting from 1 to n u hat t square. See uh, here t starting from 2 because you're considering t minus 1 so one observation is gone. So it is from 2 to n and this is from 1 to n. Clear? And d is lying between 0 to 4. So distribution of d it is dependent upon the it is it is dependent upon uh, the independent variables and uh, distribution of d is also bounded by two distributions okay and they they are actually constructing the two regions two critical regions of Durbin Watson test I'll let you know what is what exactly is that so you will start testing for the autocorrelation for the positive autocorrelation. So your null hypothesis is that there is no autocorrelation. And the alternative hypothesis is that there is the positive autocorrelation. So this rho is greater than zero. So you look for the critical values of Durbin-Watson test statistic. That is for DL and DU. This Durbin-Watson table will be given to you. And you look for DL and DU. And for the k dash value. What is k dash? k dash is the number of regression coefficients you want to estimate apart from the constant term. So for example you have beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 and beta 4 to be estimated and beta 1 is a constant term so k dash is 3. Okay so for k dash equals to 3 and the number of independent variables you'll find out dl and du. In case if d, d you will estimate from here okay in case if this d is lesser than the, the DL region. See DL and DU you will be getting from the table. Okay, the Durbin Watson table which will be provided to you. D you will compute this D according to this particular formula. So in case if this D is less than equal to L, DL, you will reject the null hypothesis and you will say that there is a, there is a significant positive autocorrelation. So there is a significant positive autocorrelation and if D is greater than DU you will, do no, you will not reject the null hypothesis. So there is no autocorrelation or no positive autocorrelation. Okay, in case if D is will be greater than DU. Now this is fine till the point your D is less than DL or D is greater than DU. You can say something about the test. But what if D is going to lie between DL and DU? You can't say anything. This is the problem of a Durbin-Watson test. That this becomes inconclusive if D will lie between DL and DU. Okay. Similarly, you can test for negative autocorrelation. So in case of negative autocorrelation, what will be a null and alternative hypothesis? Null hypothesis is that rho is equal to zero, that there is no negative autocorrelation. And alternative hypothesis is that there is a negative autocorrelation, that is rho is less than zero. Again, we'll find out for DL and DU. Okay. And in case if D is coming out to be greater than two, see in case if D is lying between zero to two, it shows a positive autocorrelation. If it is D is greater than two, there is a negative autocorrelation and you'll have to use 4 minus D instead of just D. So you will calculate D supposedly in case if that comes out to be 3. 
So you will be using for comparison with DL and DU 4 minus D instead of instead of just D. So in this case 4 minus D is 1. So you'll calculate what are DL and DU from the tables. K dash is the number of regression coefficients. K dash is the number of regression coefficients excluding the constant. So in case if 4 minus D is less than DL you'll reject the null hypothesis. What is the null hypothesis? That there is significant negative autocorrelation. You'll reject this hypothesis and in case if 4 minus D is greater than or equal to DU you will not reject the null hypothesis that there is no negative autocorrelation. But again the same problem arises in case if your 4 minus D is going to lie between DL and DU the test would be inconclusive. The test is going to be inconclusive. Now the point is what is the estimate of this first order autocorrelation? What is the estimate of the first order autocorrelation? You remember your ut is equal to rho ut minus 1 plus epsilon t. You'll have to get the estimate for this rho hat. Huh? So this, the estimate for the rho hat is given to be t starting from 2 to n u hat t u hat t minus 1 divided by t starting from 1 to n u hat t square. Clear? So, well, it could be shown that d is actually approximately equal to 2 into 1 minus rho hat. We'll be showing that in the other recording, but uh, right now just take it from me. So, rho hat, it could range from, see, um, supposedly if d is equal to 2 into 1 minus rho hat. So, and you know this that rho hat could range from minus 1 to 1. If it is 1, then d is 0. If it is minus 1, then d is 4. Okay. So, rho hat could range from minus 1 to 1. d could range from 0 to 4. So, when rho is equal to 0 and d is equal to 2, there is no first order serial correlation. When rho is equal to 1 and d is equal to 0, there is strong positive autocorrelation. Okay. d is equal to 0. And when rho is equal to minus 1 and d is equal to 4, there is strong negative autocorrelation. Let me just put this in the term of, in, in terms of diagram. So, you could see here, in case if rho is between 0, uh, sorry, in case if, uh, in case if d is going to lie between 0 to dl, you will reject the null hypothesis of positive autocorrelation. First of all, positive autocorrelation is going to lie between 0 to 2. So, it is positive autocorrelation. Negative autocorrelation would lie between 2 to 4. It, this is for the negative autocorrelation. But in case if, in case if D is going to lie between 0 to DL, you will reject the null hypothesis. If it is lying between, if it is lying between DU and 2, you will accept the null hypothesis. And in case if it lies between this region, the test becomes inconclusive. While, if this is going to, if 4 minus dl, okay, if d is going to be greater than or equal to 4 minus dl, you will be rejecting the null hypothesis. If it is lesser than 4 minus d, you will be accepting the null hypothesis. And uh, in case if d is going to lie between 4 minus du and 4 minus dl, the test would become inconclusive. Okay, so this diagram is very important. So you should know this diagram very importantly. And please make that in your in your exam. These are some of the problems of the Durbin-Watson test. Uh, one, the test could be inconclusive. In two ranges between DL and DU, in case of D is going to lie, or in case of D is going to lie between 4 minus DL and 4 minus DU, again the test could be inconclusive. It could be invalid in case of, uh, in case of YT, uh, in case of the lag dependent variables are also included as independent variables. For example, you have YT equals to alpha plus beta 1 xt plus beta 2 yt minus 1 plus ut. In case if you have this kind of uh, model, then again this test would become inconclusive. Why this would become inconclusive, we'll do that in some other recording. Other is that this test is valid only for the first order autocorrelation. It cannot test for second order. It cannot test for any other order apart from first order. So this is the problem with this test. And other in case of the independent variables become very large, DL and DU might be unavailable. So these are the major problems of the Durbin-Watson test. The other test which you're going to do for the serial correlation is the LM test, okay, which is, uh, which is an advance of 
uh, of, of for this test okay uh, it it that is made on the weaknesses of this test so that test could actually test for the higher order autocorrelation thanks